Didi Kalra and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is the investment multiplier and its working. So basically we study this topic in class 12 in graduation level and even if you are preparing for any competitive examination so make sure you pay attention because this is a very important topic. In today's video, what I'll be doing is I'll be talking about the introduction, the formula, I'll be explaining the schedules, diagrams, so basically you are at the right place. So yeah, let's get started. So first let me explain to you the concept of investment multiplier. The concept of investment multiplier was developed by J.M. Keynes. So what did Keynes show through this investment multiplier concept? He basically showed us the relationship between change in income to the change in investment. So what happens we might at times think ki for example in an economy mein investment is by 100 crores. So what we think is that income will also increase by 100 crores but that is not true. Income might increase by 200 crores. So this is why. This is because of the working functioning of multiplier mechanism. So basically investment multiplier shows us the increase in investment is essential for the increase in income. Income ke badne ke liye, we need to have the increase in investment. Multiplier means the ratio of change in income to the change in investment. This is basically the formula which is written and this is shown symbolically which is K is equal to delta Y upon delta I. So make sure Y always stands for income in economics. You don't get confused delta Y upon delta I. So if we are given the you know change in income as 300 crores and we are given the change in investments as 50 crores. Simply by this simple formula, we can calculate the value of a multiplier that is k is equal to 300 upon 50 and in this case the value of multiplier is 6. So guys, just now I explained you one formula for investment multiplier which is equal to k is equal to delta y upon delta i. But that is not the only formula which you need to memorize. You need to memorize two more formulas. One is k is equal to 1 upon 1 minus MPC. MPC is the marginal propensity to consume. And the second one is K is equal to 1 upon MPS. MPS is the marginal propensity to save. And we should know that MPC and MPS together, they sum up to 1. So using these two formulas, we are going to calculate the value of K. So let us come to this side first. We have value of MPC given and we are calculating value of the multiplier. So when value of MPC is 0, we see using the above formula, K is equal to 1 upon 1 minus 0, we get value of K as 1. Similarly, when the value of MPC is 0 0.25, we again use this formula, K is equal to 1 upon 1 minus 0 0.25, it is 1.3. Similarly, for all the cases, we are doing that. And lastly, we see when value of MPC is 1, K is equal to 1 upon 1 minus 1, that is 1 upon... 0 in mathematics would give us, you know, undefined or infinity, what you can call it. So what we notice through these two tables is that as the value of MPC is increasing from 0 to 0 0.25 to 1, the value of K is also increasing from 1 to 1.3 to 4 and to infinity. So basically both of them are directly proportional to each other, which means ek ke badne se dusra bhi badta hai, ek ke ghatne se dusra bhi ghatta hai. So value of k, minimum value of k is 1 and maximum value is infinity which you should keep in mind. Now we're coming to these red uh, tables, in this case we will be using this formula where MPS is given and we are calculating the value of k. So initially we notice MPS is given as 1, k, hum nikalenge, k is equal to 1 upon 1 which is obviously 1. In second case 0 0.75 is given as MPC, MPS sorry. So k is equal to 1 upon 0 0.75 which is 1.3 and so on and so forth and lastly we see when MPS is given as 0, k is equal to 1 upon 0 which is again undefined or infinity. So here what we notice is as the value of MPS is, in, is falling, you know we are going from 1 to 0 0.75 to 0, the value of k is increasing from 1 to 1.3 and so on to infinity. So in this case, one of them is falling and one is increasing. It means it is inversely proportional to each other. Ek badta hai, dusra ghatta hai. Ek ghatta hai, dusra badta hai. Again, the value of multiplier is same. Uh, minimum value is one and maximum value is infinity. How I just told you in this case. So I hope you are clear with this. 
So now moving ahead to the most important part and the part where students often tend to get confused is the multiplier mechanism or the working of a multiplier. One simple thumb rule which I want to tell you before we begin with this is that expense of one person is the income of other. This thing you have to keep it in your mind. Okay, why we are studying this. So this is very simple. For example, you go to buy, you have your income, you go into a grocery store and buy some grocery for your house, right? So that is your expense, right? You are spending that money to buy grocery and the person who owns the grocery store, for him, it is his income, what you are giving him, right? So your expense is equal to his income. That is what you have to keep in mind. Very important thing. Okay, so this is our table. Two things before we begin this table is MPC, what we've taken it as 0.5, we have assumed here. And with the help of the formulas I just taught you, we can calculate K is at 2. Because MPC is given, we can find out the value of K is this 2. Now here we've taken 6 rounds. This uh, column we've taken increase in investment, that is delta I. And next we've taken increase in income, which is delta Y. And lastly, we've taken increase in consumption, that is delta C. Sometimes people often put a column as delta S, but I don't want to confuse you, hence I've not put another column. Okay, so now we see initially we begin from one round, first round, our increase in investment, which is equal to 20. Okay, so this is basically autonomous investment. You can study a little about it. And aage jo bhi hum investment karenge, wo sab induced investment hogi. Okay, so initially this investment is 20. And in the first round, we notice guys, that this increase in investment, that is 20, is equal to the increase in income, 20. Okay, first time kya hota hai? Equal hota hai. All this is in crores, okay, remember that. Now, the person who has received 20 crores, maybe it's you, we all are getting rich. So this person who has received 20 crores, he will spend some part of it on consumption, right? And since we've taken MPC as 0.5, that is half, we are going to spend half of it, okay, and save half of it. So that is why our increase in consumption is 10, right? So whatever 20 crores may say, aapne 10 crores ja ke khach diye. All this is very hypothetical, okay? So 10 crores, what we, where do we spend it? Maybe we go to a Zara store, okay? We go and buy and shop a lot of it. So that 10 crore is our consumption. The owner of the Zara store, it is his increase in income is 10 crores, what you gave him, right? So this 10 which was the increase in consumption is now the increase in income of the recipient who received that. Now that person who has received 10 crores, supposingly the owner has got 10 crores now of the Zara store. This is all hypothetical. So he will go and maybe, you know, go to a theater and watch a movie. So he will then spend half of his MPC on consumption, which is 5 crores. And further, this 5 crores is who has got this 5 crores. This increase in income is of those whom the Zara person gave the money to, right? So basically, if you see, there follows a trend. This 10 goes down, then we go to 5, then this 5 goes down, then we go to 2.5 and so on and so on. We see, we reach till the point we've reached MPC or increase in consumption, delta C becomes 0. We keep on going there. So here we've reached 0 0.623, I've not gone further, but we will go till the time we reach 0, after which we will stop. So when we calculate this, I hope you're clear with what I've taught you till now. When we calculate this increase in income, if we add this 20, 30, 35, simply we will get the total as 40. We don't need to actually add this also. We can use the formula. The formula which is delta Y is equal to delta I into K. Right? The K formula I told you right in the beginning. So we investment ki value hai 20 and K we've taken it as 2, right? So obviously we know our increase in income is going to be 40. That is how we can also calculate it. So we will see our total increase in income is 40. So what is one thing which you have noticed is investment kya thi? We started with 20 crores. We will think income be 20 crores se badegi, but nahi, income humari badi hai 40 se. It's double. Why is it double? Because the value of our K was 2. That's why we see that with the increase in investment, our income has increased multiplier times thanks to the multiplier mechanism. So lastly guys, coming to the diagram of the investment multiplier. I know I'm exceeding the time, but what to do this concept is only such that I can't explain it in very short. So moving ahead to this diagram where we have income on the x-axis and aggregate demand on the y-axis. 
our y is equal to as that is our aggregate supply curve which is always a 45 degree line from the origin is in blue whereas the aggregate demand curves which begin a little above from the point zero are in red 81 and 82 they are labeled as such okay very simple the diagram is very simple you see initially the ad1 and as curve they intersect at point e1 okay this is the point they intersect at and if we draw a perpendicular we get it as y1 as our income and e1 is our equilibrium now due to some increase in aggregate demand what happens is that our aggregate demand curve shifts upwards from ad1 it goes to ad2 now we see the new intersection point between ad and a uh, as is e2 which is the equilibrium 2 and again if we draw a perpendicular we again come to y2 which is a new level of income now what you can clearly see even from the very naked eye you can see that this change from y1 to y2 that is delta y is much more than the change in investment which is this this between ad1 and ad2 this gap between e1 and e2 that is delta i and this is delta y we can clearly see that delta y has exceeded delta i we just did that right 40 was a lot more than uh, 20 because of the investment multiplier mechanism so this is all about the investment multiplier guys i hope this video made you understand this concept in a crystal clear way and i will see you in the next video pretty soon